his autobiography, Fletcher Jones tells of how he put people before profits and prospered. Inspired by a famous Japanese visionary, he shared the ownership and management of his famous clothing company with his staff. Born a pauper, traumatized by war and limited by a severe stutter, Fletcher Jones changed his world with a dream of equality and integrity. In 1924, in the Victorian country town of Warrnambool, Fletcher Jones opened his first tailor's shop. No one at the time would have imagined that he could turn his small business into a clothing manufacturing empire and a household name. He overbought. Um, he wasn't turning over his stock at the rate that was needed. And uh, he sort of didn't have enough cash flow to pay his bills. So his creditors, they entered into a scheme of arrangement with him he so wasn't allowed to clear his own till. He had to give up the keys of his shop to the landlord who would let him in in the morning. That had to sell everything that was of any value. And uh, it, it must have been very, very tough times. Jones needed great tenacity to move from these unpromising beginnings to his later successes. And as it happened, his childhood had provided exactly the challenges that built this resolve. He had a very bad stammer. His stammer would cause the other children to laugh at him and make a fool of him. Due to his speech, his father got him this job as a tomato grower. He was on his own and so forth, not talking to people. His father was a union blacksmith who was laid off for long periods without welfare. Jones saw the suffering created by harsh working conditions and how his family drew strength from their Christian beliefs. Jones would overcome the disadvantages of his childhood, but he would not forget these experiences. They inspired him to create a more equal society. We had no hospital or me medical benefit. We had no insurance. C concept of sick pay did not exist. He saw that workers within the gold fields were basically being exploited. Many a house would have a sheet hung up on the veranda and behind the sheet you would hear a man coughing his life away. And Dad told a story about it in one case of a family taking the coffin with the body in it and leaning it up against the front door of one of the mine owners. And so Dad had this feeling that there was a great amount of injustice out there in the way in which workers were treated. And I've no doubt a feeling that the world could be a better place than this if ever he was given a chance. Destined for a life of manual labour, Fletcher was curiously drawn to the local tailor shop and the dignified work of a master craftsman. With the outbreak of war in 1914, Fletcher Jones did his duty. The dream of becoming a tailor was replaced by a nightmare. Fletcher Jones was buried alive by a huge explosion. He lay under the mud for four hours before his mates were able to dig him out. He remained unconscious for eight days. He's, he certainly had shell shock, and eventually he was repatriated back to Australia as a TPI veteran, totally and permanently incapacitated. Um, he, he used to tell the story that he, he, he queued up for the pension once and then when he was in the queue and it's the other second time, he shouted out, I'm buggered, and ran 
and he never went back for the pension because he knew he had to do something else. Leah Purcell talks to five extraordinary Indigenous women and over dinner explores the perceptions of Australia's black...